Let's, oh, there we go. Okay. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, paragraphs 18 to 25, as amended by Chapter 28 of the Acts of 2009, <laughs> the Wetlands Protection Act, and the Wellfleet Environmental Protection Bylaw of July 1986 and its regulations of January 2000, the Wellfleet Conservation Commission will hold public hearings on Wednesday, March 17, 2021 at 5 p.m. via remote meeting pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's orders imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted at this meeting. Town hall is closed to the public. Board members will participate in the meeting remotely, which is what we're doing now. And I will read out who's here. See, John, okay. We have- uh, we Just open the business meeting then? Yes, I guess we should. All right. Uh, does somebody wanna to move to open the business? I have to read in who's uh, here. Who's here, right. right. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have John Cumbler, Barbara Bresnell, Ben Fairbank, Michael Fisher, and Leon Shreves are in attendance. So does somebody wanna to move to open the business meeting? As well as the Hillary. Do you want to mention that well, she's Hillary here? isn't, she's- She's here. here. She's here. <laughs> okay, yeah, but she, I don't think she's a member of the commission, is she? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Right. She's never mentioned in this. Oh, okay. okay. So I need a motion to open the business meeting. So move, John Cumbler. Second. Second, Michael Fisher. All right, we'll have a voice vote. John Cumbler. Hi. I, he said. Uh, okay. And Barbara Bresnell? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Mike Fisher, Michael Fisher? Yes. And Leon Shreves, aye. All right. We're now open for business. So does anybody have anything they want to talk about before we start with the, with the agenda? Um, I would just say that I am actively looking through the file for 1400 Trequest at Neck Road. Um, they did have a permit in 2017. They were represented by Gordon Peabody um, to put the stairs in and they followed a path and they were supposed to be removable at the bottom. A replacement stairway, sectional and removable. We have a design plan that's hard to look at because it's kind of a sketch. Talks about helical piles driven to refusal, um, stuff like that. But I'm looking for an actual site plan um, to go along with any and all of this. Did you say that they were putting the stairway where there was an existing trail? Yes, yes. Location of pre-existing stairway and proposed replacement stairway. And so I'm just pulling out the site plan here. And that was done by Slade and Associates in 2017. Um, but it's less than easy to assess whether this location is the location where the stairs were. Does anybody have a recollection where they were? on the bank? Uh, I looked on Google Earth and stairs can be seen. I don't know if it's the same place, but okay. there, if you look on Google Earth, there is a set of stairways on the property north of 1440, which would be, I guess, 1400 okay. yep. um, near a path. Okay. But I don't know if these are in the same place because I didn't go up to the private property at all. Okay. And then we have seasonal installation by March 31st and removal by October 31st. So they do have permission to put the stairs in and take the stairs out. What I don't know is if they're constructed to plan that we have. So that's what we have to Right. I, I, I would assume that we would not have allowed them to drill through the coastal bank. I'm assuming that we would not have allowed the stairs to be flush with a 
with the bank, they're supposed to be sort of elevated to yeah. allow mm -hmm. sand to move underneath. Um, so uh, they don't look like something we would have permitted in that particular style. Is this owned by the, the direct abutter to 1440? Yes. Yes, yes. Dr. Weller. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> He's very He's getting pretty up on scouring and sand migration. And that's what I'm looking at the design here. And it was Gordon who had permitted this. Um, and the design shows, I'm just looking for something more descriptive the construction, but the design shows components, caterpillar beach stairway system, sectional installation. The drawing's terrible, sorry. Um, Was Dr. Weller the uh, owner then? That's only three years ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Could um, uh, two, could Doug go by and take a look at that and maybe yeah. Yeah. determine if we need to send a letter or not? Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's got two by six joists and then two by eight cross beam mounted on a two by eight L frame bolted to the girders. And then it's got helical anchors spliced at the piling location. So, yes, I think. Um, I think so, and maybe I'll just uh, tune up Gordon to uh, have a look as well, because I wonder. <laughs> you wonder if you met the engineering spec specification? Yeah, yes. So stay tuned. We're, we're okay. actively, uh, actively checking it out. And thanks, Barbara, for bring that to our attention well it was a i saw a volunteer who brought it to my attention well, <laughs> is that the gentleman that called me uh mr Hal? Hal? oh no different guy different guy okay different guy so people are noticing it yes yes for sure for sure anything else before we go on to mail i Did do we... have a um jurisdictional opinion but you can do mail I'm only going by the agenda. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, I can do mail. I was just trying to write to Gordon at the same time, so I didn't lose sight of this. But um, we've received, it's okay, um, a letter from Eversource informing us that it's time to selectively apply herbicides along the right of way in our town. Um, I was also queried by I think the Provincetown Independent, the newspaper, uh, if we were gonna send a letter, I informed them that we have sent letters in the past. Um, we have informed them of the locations of our sensitive receptors and drinking water wells. And um, we have not agreed to send a letter yet because we have not met upon it. So um, if we want to send the same letter, it doesn't seem to be terribly useful to continue sending letters, but I'm happy to um, peck it out and ship it off if that's your pleasure. Does that letter also include um, apiaries where people have bees? No, because we, um, I can pull up the most recent letter, but um, we do not know all of the locations of our beekeepers in town. Okay, because John Portnoy is like right on the power line. Yes, there. yes. Yeah. And I'm not too far either from it, but shouldn't affect me as much as John directly. Do you um, keep these as well? Yes. Okay. But I, you could just add a sentence about our local beekeepers are very concerned about, about this. Something to that extent. So and, this... And, this is along the uh, the big power lines that go up by yep. John's house and yeah. down by Duck Pond. And yeah, you can congratulate them because today they put up an osprey pole um, 
on the power lines right across from where the two chicks were um, electrocuted last summer. <laughs> they learned All the right, I'm just pulling up uh, one of our previous letters on the YOP. Um, and it says, Mr. Hayes, the Conservation Commission has reviewed the 2019 yearly operating plan and offers the following comments. We strongly believe that the maintenance of the power line rights of way using herbicide presents an unnecessary risk to the residents of Wellfleet, their aquifer and the environment. As you know, Wellfleet has extremely sandy soils that are highly permeable and allow contaminants to easily leach through to groundwater. Wellfleet residents rely solely on groundwater for their potable water needs. We have confidence that the other methods for vegetation management would be more beneficial. We strongly urge you to remove herbicide application from the toolbox and rely on methods such as manual removal, selective pruning, fire, grazing, and meadowscaping to maintain the power line right away in our community and on Cape Cod. In Wellfleet, there are 13 properties uh, with private drinking water wells near the way, some as little as 10 feet away from the edge of the easement. The municipal well field is located less than 400 feet from Way 301. Right of Way 301 also crosses very valuable wetlands, including Herring River, Hatches Creek, Silver Spring Brook, and Fresh Brook, and is located within rare plant and species habitat. Out of concern for the public health and the environment, the conservation's preference for an herbicide-free right of way. So we can add a line about apiaries. Well, in well, they're not using insecticides; they're just using herbicides. But I don't know how those chemicals affect bees. I, I think that's a good letter, Hillary. Yeah, okay. And so because just, because I don't know how those chemicals affect bees if they do. I mean, they affect yeah. the the plants that the bees go. Yeah. Through but I, I don't know of any direct, John Porton I would know, but he would have, uh, I think, mentioned it last time the letter was sent. Okay. Hadn't they determined that it was a nicotine in uh, some, of the, some of the insecticides that was causing the- Yeah, but the, these are herbicides, this is different. These are chemicals right. that kill plants and not right. Right. insects. That, yeah, I was just saying that it's the, that I don't think there'd be nicotine in a, a herbicide. No. No, but who knows what's in there? Yeah. <laughs> <Too> right. <laughs> we don't know. Okay, so I'll send the same same letter again. Just update the year. Mm -hmm. Then we're consistent at least. Do we have to have a vote on that? No, I don't think it's you know. Okay. Yeah. No, I'll just do it. And 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 I'm very impressed with how effective our letter is. Yes. Well, that's why I was like, do we even bother sending it again? Because it just seems to fall on deaf ears. I'm happy to change the date and send the same letter, but you know, it, it's fine. It's it's just the way that it is. That's yeah, okay. we should we should be on record as opposing it. Yes. Okay. Consider mm -hmm. it going. I'm gonna change the date from you know, when we sent the last March and March 19th. <laughs> so, yeah. That's fine. We're good. Don't Twice worry. Twice in a year. <laughs> no, no. We're just going to change the date. Okay. That's done. That's, all right. So um, that was the mail. Um, we did um, also have and receive lots of correspondence from our friend um, on Old Truro Road. Um, and I think John Portnoy is the supervisor on that particular project. Um, he sent us two sets of interrogatories. Um, this is 135 Old Truro Road, where there's a new dwelling. We had an issue with the silt fence being down and um, a deck, if you want to call it a deck, put on the back that wasn't on the permanent plan. He, The property owner came to meet with us at our Zoom meeting in November um of 2020 and assured us we would receive a certified as built so after exchanging lots of correspondence we had a zoom call with uh myself doug and the town administrator this week and he again assures us the certified as built is coming so that we can devise a path forward for him so that's ongoing as well with lots of correspondence that i have not sent to you because it's um too much to respond to. Oh, too time consuming. Yes, yeah. thank you. Oh. Yes. <laughs> you did send out a uh, peer review on the Samoset. Yes, property. so that came in today. Um, I have not had a chance to read it, which I'm disappointed to say. Um, yeah. And as I understand it, the other one for Bayview will be in tonight around five o'clock. So, um, <laughs> 
if folks from Coastal are available to talk about, you know, what they think of the report, that's great. Um, if not, I think we're going to have to vote it at our next meeting. So just so that we can um, rightfully review the report that we requested. Right. I did right. read it. The bottom line oh. is they said it was it, it was OK. OK, and, great. Uh, but but they I skimmed through it, but they had a lot of questions that we should ask the applicant yes. and other things that should be in the filing. But I didn't get to read everything, so I, I really couldn't even. Well, that letter is going to the applicant, isn't it? As yeah. well. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. that's that's who's supposed to be responding to those. In other words, it's the oh. the report goes to us and goes to them and gives them okay. suggestions on what to do on every section. Yes. It up. So I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe they will have read it and they will, you know, answer the questions and get back to us. So yeah, but it doesn't so, sound like it's going to happen tonight. Yeah, no, but if they're on, I think we can at least acknowledge that we received the report, you know, at whatever time today. Uh, we wish we got it sooner, but you know, such is life and we will be ready to discuss it and vote at the next meeting and if they could respond to the right. comments raised, you know, it would make right. the hearing go quicker. Or, you know, can they put in a uh, a uh, uh, a modified NOI with with their additions or subtractions? I think so. Yeah, if they have changes to make, absolutely. Okay, good. Because that was what what was being suggested in the letter. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other jurisdictional opinions? I have one jurisdictional opinion. I'm going to go fetch it. Okay. And that is for Richard and Dick Lay. Sorry, Richard and Jean Lay at 245 Gold Pond Road, map eight, parcel 61. And Doug was out there and met with the applicant, and they would like to. Uh, this is a request to remove two dead trees and a brush pile lying within the buffer zone of the freshwater wetlands at 245 Gold Pond Road. Both trees lie on the upland north of the wetland. Both trees have fallen upslope away from the wetland. They can both be accessed without intruding into the wetland via an extended dirt road and lawn area between the trees and the wetland. The westerly of the two trees is a locust that was blown over several years ago. It's hung up in several nearby trees. When it finally comes down, the crown will extend over the driveway. The easterly tree has been down for many years and is shading out a small holly tree. The species of the tree is unknown. We propose to limb both trees and remove them from the property, any unstable or unusable branches. The remainder of the tree is to be cut up for firewood and also removed from the property. Both trees will be cut off at ground level, leaving the base and roots in the ground. The brush pile will be removed at the same time as the branches. And Doug was out there, uh, met with Dick Lay and said it seems reasonable. So are they gonna put in an RDA for that or? Do we no, just it's say... because it's two trees, we can do it on the jurisdictional opinion. Okay. And, and so, one of them sounds like it's already blown over. Yes. Resting both on of them are dead. Tree. Both dead. of them are dead. Okay. Are they both hung up or are they? One is hung up and the other's um, leaning. It sounds like the locust was. Yeah, the locust is hung up and the other is yeah. just dead. The other the unknown tree. For the second one is because of the holly tree? Uh, it's dead. The holly tree is dead? No, no, they want to remove the second tree so that the holly tree can survive. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I, I, I was just asking because holly trees don't need sun. So, well, they, they can grow in shade. So I was just, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. But It says the easterly tree has been down for many years and is shading out a small holly tree. Hmm. Maybe the holly tree doesn't have room to, to grow because the tree's over it. I don't know. They're my they're my neighbors. I should walk over there. And see. Yeah, I'm looking at the picture. I'm looking at the picture, and I'm not seeing the holly tree. I see the locust tree hung up and leaning. Um, three pictures of the locust tree, and the other one, it just 
It looks like it's dead and hung up as well. Yeah, well, those are dangerous. So. Yeah, I have no issues with that at all. And it's it's very wooded there along the that yes. little stretch of Eel Creek. Um, yes. So I don't I don't have any problems with that. I'm thrilled that they actually came for a, a jail and just didn't do it themselves. Okay. Do I hear a motion? <laughs> <clears throat> Um, I will move that we approve the JL for lay on Gull Pond Road. John Cumbler, second. second. Okay, we'll have a voice vote. John Cumbler? Yes. Barbara Bresnow? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Yes. And Leon Shreves? Yes. That's, that's that. Okay, and then I had another request, and it's gone missing on my... Oh, here we go from Tony Masari out at 244 King Philip Road. And he needs to replace his railing from the top of his rock wall to the water. It consists of six galvanized posts with a rope through the post that is corroded. The posts are placed into the rock wall and um, secured by a small amount of concrete. There's two railings, one on each side of the stairs, and he's only proposing to replace one of the railings. They'll be constructed exactly the same, um, six posts in the rock secured by a small amount of concrete and a rope threaded through the posts. There's no digging in the sand, no work outside of the rocks. Did you visit the uh, site? Or I have seen it... the site, yep, and it, it's reasonable. Okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with the site too, and they're not going to be working on the beach, on the nope. on the bank. They're just working on their rocks. So. Yeah, <laughs> working on the rocks. Okay, any other discussion? Then I'm open to a. Oh, um, I, I I move that we approve the JO for. Um, Masari, I, I don't know what the name is. 244 King Philip Road. 244 King Philip Road to replace the uh, railing on his rock revetment. Second, Michael. Okay, voice vote. John okay. Cumber. Hmm? Yes. Barbara Bresnow. Yes. Ben Fairbank. Yes. Michael Fisher. Yes. And Leon Shreves. Yes. So that's okay. it. Great. And then I had. Another call, um, this isn't a jurisdictional opinion just yet, but maybe we could talk about it briefly from Lillian Greenberg on Anawan Road. Um, she was discussing with me a couple of invasive shrubs on the marsh side of the road across the street from her house that she would I like want to have something over it with a diffuser to manage she would like to manage or take down um and i wondered barbara doug's going to go out there and have a look at it but i wonder if you know off the top of your head who owns that marshland um i think it's um state i think it's fox <laughs> island wildlife management area okay so we have worked with them in the past on another property um right. To, to get some things removed. Do you know the shrubs that she's talking about? No, I don't. Um, okay. I don't know what she's talking about. There's uh, shrubs and a lot of vegetation on the marsh side of Anawan Road. Okay. okay. But I don't know that they're invasive. Okay. Okay. Uh, Doug's going to go out there and have a look and um, we're going to work with her. And, and, and why does she want to do that? Because she thinks they're... Um, they're invasive and she doesn't want them to take over the area. Okay. All right, Doug would be a good person because he knows his plants. Yep, yep, yep. So, so he's scheduled to go out there and have a look. So just, just know that that's in the queue. Okay. Uh, I just, just as a parenthetical, um, Lillian Greenberg has a fabulous turtle garden in her backyard. And yes. they, actually, they actually come up from the marsh through those invasive plants and climb up her, her driveway and uh, nest in her yard. So she sent yeah, a letter. Little... Well, she dropped off a letter today because she was picking up some water sampling bottles and we had spoke on the phone yesterday. And I think she said that at least 144 terrapins nested there or hatched there. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, at least 
least that many hatchlings. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's Which is very, pretty incredible. Yeah, it is. Well, that sounds like it. Anything else before we uh, look at meeting minutes? No, sorry. Sorry to okay. bombard you with this stuff. Oh, oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay, we have three meeting minutes that are being proposed that we, uh, that we accept or approve. First one's on February 3rd. And I think this has been pretty carefully edited already. I read it, it looked fine to me. That, those are the one that John Portnoy edited? Yeah. yeah. Yes. The, the issue uh, I think is in the, where it says in parentheses, need addresses, I'm doing it on a borrowed computer and don't have access to my files. Right. I should probably not, it should be answered, right? So properties on Old Truro Road, you just we just heard about that. And then the one on Main Street, I'm not sure which one that was. So we just need to fill in the addresses there. And Hillary just mentioned the address of the Old Truro Road one. Um, Christine? Hello, Christine. I'm here. Do you do you still need assistance on those addresses for the? Well, I can get that information from Hillary probably. Okay, so with that, I uh, move that we approve the minutes of February what? Third. <laughs> Third. Third. Mm -hmm. Second, Second, Michael. Can can all we right. approve? Can we approve them all at once instead I don't of? Think so. Okay, all right. <laughs> It'd be nice. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, so we'll have a voice vote, uh, vote, voice vote on February 3rd minutes. John Cumbler? Yes. Barbara Bresnow? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Yes. And Leon, yes. All right, the next one would be the 17th of February, which I think was a... I don't have, I don't have, I've got a single leg. Yeah, now I know what I got to do. Let's see here. 217, there we go. Oh, I had a yeah, big. Well, yeah. What were you just thinking, like some sort of a, like a. Some, someone has to mute themselves. Yeah. Yeah, this one had a lot to do with the. Uh, with 1440, yeah, that was a big deal. Or those the ones Deb and I um, both edited? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay, yeah, so I, I edited them, so I think they're okay, but if anyone else has any questions. I read that there. it looked okay to me. Touchy subject, but uh, um, fine. Question, do, do I not vote to approve them if I'm not, if I wasn't at this particular well, Right, you can't vote if you didn't weren't at the meeting. Right. I recuse myself. Yeah, or abstain or something. I don't know what the technical term is. Abstinence is always best. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, do I have a motion? Uh, so move, Barbara. All right. I can, John Cumbler. All right. So, uh, no, just wait, 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 one more thing. Uh, yeah. On yeah. page four, there's a note that says, not sure about this sentence. Oh. It's in blue on my computer. The focus of the commission is to determine the structure as pre-1978 and if there's no feasible alternative to rock revetment. Oh, I may have done that. I may have asked that that be deleted because that wasn't part of our deliberations. We just had to, um, the remand based on the project because the judge said we could not base it on that, which we didn't. So I thought we should delete that sentence. That's fine, but we, you know, we should do that. Yes, I agree. So, so that, that right. deletion accepted, then we can vote, I think. Okay. Yeah, that sentence has got a couple of typos in it anyway. Okay, so is that clear to you, Christine? I second. Uh, with the <laughs> sentence removed. Okay, and Christine, do you, are you with us on what that is? 
She's muted. Yep. Yes, I, I will be able to find that and take that sentence. Yeah, it's highlight and purple. Okay. So, all right, so we'll have a vote for it on that, the, of accepting that with that sentence removed. John Cumbler? Yes. Barbara Bresnan? Yeah, yes. Ben Fairbank? Abstain. Okay, Michael Fisher? Yes. And Leon, yes. Okay. And then finally, we have the ones for last meeting, which is the 3rd of March. And oh, you don't spell berry, babe, or bearberry with the A-R-E. Okay. I swear I saw something in one of these that just didn't look right, but I sure don't see it now, so in the fog of war. All right. I did spell it B-A-R-E-B-E-R-R-Y. Is it B-E-A-R? Yes. Uh, yes. B -E -R? Like a okay. bear. Okay. It's not a naked berry. It's a... <laughs> it's a growling bear berry. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bear, bear berries, that's uh, evocative. Um, <laughs> Okay. It's, a strip, it's a strip group. <laughs> <laughs> it's for strip plannings, right? <laughs> uh, no, there is one small thing. Uh, uh, it has roll call and John Cumbler's name is spelled wrong. About oh, 10 lines from yeah. the top. Oh my goodness. Just before the business meeting. Uh, There's right. an extra L. There is. I'm seeing John Cumbler twice, and it's okay. Okay, well, maybe it's been corrected, but what Hillary just sent out under roll call. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, I see it. Acting Chair Michael Fisher opened the meeting. Roll call John Cum Cumbler. Cumbler. Right. We roll those so. L's. And... <laughs> yes. it's, it's the Scottish blood in you, right, John? Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So with that correction, you with us on that, uh, Christine? It. Yep. Okay. With that correction in mind, do I hear a motion to accept? So moved, Michael. Second, Second Barbara. Barbara. Anyway. Okay. We'll have a voice vote. Uh, voice vote. John Cumbler. Yes. Barbara Bresnell? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Yes. And Leon, yes. So do we have anything else to discuss or we can take can a break? Can I just for... chime in to let Dick Lay know that we approved his jurisdictional opinion? It looks like he's on the line now. I'm not sure if he's been on the line the whole time or not. Uh, sure. Sure. Thank you very much. I was not online. I just came on. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dick. Good night. Good night. Okay, so do I hear, uh, shall we ad adjourn for 20 minutes? Well, I think we have to close the business meeting. We can close the business meeting. Do I hear a motion? So moved, Michael. I'm just thinking if I had anything else to tell you before you, <laughs> before you abruptly close, but yes, I guess it's okay if I think of something Come else. Come on, Hillary, get it together now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit scattered. It's like yeah, I'm totally scattered too. <laughs> but that's normal for me, <laughs> like you. <laughs> well, I'm tapping my fingers, thinking. But if it comes to me, I'll just let you know. Okay. okay. All Sorry. right. So, I, did I hear a motion? Yes, from Michael. Oh, I remember okay. now. All uh -oh. right. Wait, before, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I knew there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. Um, on Main Street, do you remember we had the Shannons uh, and then we have Anthony Boutinol on one side and the Shannons on the other across from um, the well. And the Shannons took down a large shrub row it feels like yes. months ago now and we sent letters and correspondence we corresponded with mr shannon's attorney mr shannon has an active construction project going on uh currently 
and he has not come before us to talk about his shrub cutting um, yet. So we sent out another bit of correspondence to him uh, maybe two weeks ago or so. And I got a call from Mr. Boutignal yesterday telling me that he's taken down additional shrubs on the bank. So um, we expect to be having him come before us shortly here to talk about what has been done. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Hmm. Sorry, that was the pressing thing. Right, well, that, that is, and that's right. That's all within the 50 foot, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. And might require a site visit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, we waiting for him to respond back to our second letter. He had an attorney, then he didn't have an attorney, so I don't know what happened. But so he's looking for an attorney, and then he cuts down more shrubs. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, he got rid of his attorney, then cut down more shrubs. So. <laughs> so Hillary. Yes. Hillary. Yes. I am going to be gone next month. Yes, I have you as gone from four one to four thirty, and John is coming back on three twenty seven. Barbara, are you going anywhere? No. Nope. Okay. The only yeah. thing, the only thing that will prevent my daughters do uh, for a baby next week, but oh, you know. Oh my goodness! This, congratulations. But, is that uh, the same know, same it, daughter this last time? No. A year ago? No, no. no. Oh. That's what I was thinking. It was about a <laughs> year ago. That's pretty fast. We were all around. sitting in the meeting room. So, so if she goes into labor during the next meeting, I won't be here. Okay. Very well. <laughs> okay. I hope not. No, that's she'd be very late. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And good. I expect to be here. So okay, good. Ben, you'll be here. I will be here. Okay. Mike, you'll we be can here. To go yes. Time. Okay, great. Good. Then we're good. All right. Okay. Five, five o'clock. Back okay. to Michael's motion. We have to uh, vote. <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> Do I hear a second to adjourn the business meeting? Second, John Cumbler. Okay. Voice voice vote. John Cumbler. Yes. Barbara Bresnow. Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Yes. And Leon? Yes. So I guess we just uh, mute our yep. microphones and stop the video for a while. You got it. OK, Leon. All right, pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, chapter 30A, paragraphs 18 to 25, as amended by chapter 28 of the acts of 2009, the Wetland Protection Act and to the Wellfleet Environmental Protection Bylaw of July 1986 and its regulations of January 2000, the Wellfleet Conservation Commission will hold public hearings on Wednesday, March 17th, 2021 at five o'clock via remote meeting. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's order orders imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted at this meeting. Town hall is closed in, to the public. Board members will participate in this meeting remotely. So, do I hear a motion to open up the hearing? So moved, Michael. Second. Barbara. Oh, John seconded. Okay. All right. Voice. We'll have a voice voice vote. John Cumbler. Yes. Barbara Bresnow. Yes. Ben Fairbank. Yes. Michael Fisher. Yes. And Leon Shreves. Yes. Okay. The first three are uh, all to do with pretty much the same area, I think. Uh, so we have this three peer reviews. Uh, is anybody representing uh, the Simone project? So Simone and Michelson um, were done together um, as one peer review. And I see Charlie, I see you're on here. Um, we have not had a chance yet to review this document. I sent it to Mike, um, to Alan, uh, shortly after I sent it to the commission. And so we all have it hot off the press. We don't know, um, Charlie, if you had a chance to review it, if you have any comments back. Um, so I have had a chance to review it. And I guess, Hillary, after you do have a chance to read it, uh, if you could maybe follow up with me and, and uh, just let me know if uh, you expect anything else from us uh, regarding the letter, that would be great. Okay. 
did they make any recommendations that that you would want to weigh in on just so we can hear from you uh, no, I think it was all pretty straightforward. Their conclusion, they said that the sloping rock revetment was a suitable alternative. And uh, then obviously a lot of information on the in-between. So uh, I will prepare a, uh, a uh, comment letter of our own and address some of their points, which uh, I think it makes sense to uh, follow up in another two weeks at the next hearing okay. after everybody has a chance to review the report. Okay. That works for me if that works for the commissioners. Uh, yeah, as long, as long as we get those comments from, um, from him and, and, and it's so we can read them before the meeting. Yes, ideally we would have comments back from Charlie um, a week before. before, just so we have enough time. And our next meeting is April 7th. Three okay. weeks. So that gives us an extra week. It does. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I noticed that uh, Mr. Mickel, uh, Mickelson is on the line. Michelson, yeah. Michelson, sorry. That's okay. So I guess he's gotten the word now. We can see if okay. he has any comments. All right. So we're going to continue both of those. Do we need to do them one at a time? I think so. I move that we continue uh, Simone uh, project, map 28, parcels 186 and 185. Second, Michael. Okay, voice, voice vote. John Cumbler. Yes. Barbara Bresnow. Yes. Ben Fairbank. Yes. Michael Fisher. Yes. And Leon Streeves. Yes. <laughs> and somebody on the phone. Okay, do I hear a motion for from Michelson? I move that we continue Michelson, map 28, parcel 184. Second, Michael. All right. John Cumbler. I just have a question. Does the if Michelson is on the phone, do they want to have a comment? That's a good question. Uh, Michelson? Yeah. Oops, I keep flipping out here. Sorry. Um no, I'm happy with what's been discussed. Uh, thank you. Okay, okay. great. I want to make sure. Thank, thank you, John. You. That's a good idea. Okay, so we'll have a vote. John? Yes. Barbara Bresnow? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Yes. And Leon Shreves? Yes. All right. Are we in the same position with the uh, Boringer? Boringer? Yes. Yes, we just got their report in. I'm going to forward that to the commission, to Don Monroe and Erica Norman and Bob, and then we can be prepared to have a discussion on it at our next meeting. Okay. In so that case, we I want move, to continue that. I move that we continue Boringer map 34 parcels 212 and 33. I hear a second. Second, John Cumbler. Okay. How do you vote, John Cumbler? Aye. Barbara Bresnow? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Recuse because it's on our land, trust's land. Okay. And Leon Shreves, aye. All right. Is there a form we sign? No. Not for continuation. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. All right. Okay. The next on the list on the agenda is Kavanaugh, a certificate of compliance. Is there anyone to represent that? And who is the um, supervisor on this job? Um, we have a letter from Jason Ellis, certifying that the work was done in compliance with the order. Um, the project supervisor doug was out there as well checking on a couple things and the project supervisor was... i think it was you hillary well it might have been because i did <laughs> send doug out there but i'm i'm looking just to be sure it was a septic upgrade i think uh no it was ed simpson who's no longer with the commission but doug was uh, out there and it was found to be in compliance with the order um as we had issued what, so we what was the project it was a new dwelling and a septic system. 
Oh, oh. That, that was to build the house back then. Okay. Yep, exactly. Okay. So do I hear a motion? Uh, Barbara, I move that we approve the certificate of compliance for Kavanaugh, 100 Peace Valley Road. Okay. We have a person who wants to say something. Uh, yeah, this yes. is Jason Ellis. You have the floor. Yeah, this is Jason Ellis. I just I just was here for any questions, so I don't have anything to say other than that. Okay. Are there any questions from the commissioners? All right. Do I hear a motion? I think I already moved that, so we can. Oh, okay. Do I have a second? We need a second. Second, John Cumbler. Okay, John Cumbler, how do you vote? Aye. Barbara Bresnow? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Rick Hughes. Okay, and Leon Shreves, yes. Okay, and that, that, is, for, that is Form 8B. I have an Right. Right. Okay, the next one is Moore, 99 way 60. Is Mr. Moore on the line? Does anybody represent this um, project? I see it. Steve, Steve Moore is on the line. He just needs to unmute and he could represent his project to us. Oh. Now, can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Did anybody do a uh, site visit to this? Today? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Robert and I did. And what were the thoughts on that? Um, it was for some tree cutting. Mm -hmm. It's within and, the 50, right? Um, the tree cutting uh, was some of it's in the 50. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some of it outside of the 50. Um, I thought it was a reasonable project given how close the trees were to the house. Um, the only thing that um, I'm not sure about is the planting plan and how many plants and what kind of plants for mitigation on the bank. Mr. Moore did show us where he'd like to put the plants um, and it's, it's, it's on the site plan, the embankment location for listing, but I think he would have to work with, um, Hillary or Doug as to how many plants and what types of plants would be appropriate. Usually John Portnoy can chimes in on that, right. but I'm, I don't feel comfortable suggesting a plant. Yeah. Um, some of these are invasive, aren't they? I mean, there aren't rhododendrons and azaleas. Well, they're, they're ornamental. They're not necessarily invasive but um once again I'm, i don't know my plants so right. um yeah, and, and it depends it depends on the azalea i mean there's there are azaleas that are native oh good um i am i i i basically don't have a big problem with this i am a little nervous about the fact that they're cutting down uh the completely cutting or at least cutting to I don't know, to five or six feet, the oaks, um, rather than trim them. Um, I'm not, I just worried about the fact that we're cutting down trees, which are, you know, much more efficient at pulling uh, carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and replacing it with shrubbery, which is much more inefficient at that. Um, I would have preferred trimming those oaks rather than cut them down, but I'm not going to we're, we're, we're more than willing to plant trees. Um, well, I, I think you may, planting trees, it's going to be difficult because it would be in roughly in the same place and they'll grow up again. But well, I, I, would, I, would, I would prefer to put trees in a, that would grow the smallest size. You know, I, there's plenty of dwarf varieties. Uh, you can control the size of a tree, but. I, I think cedars too don't, the branches don't spread out like that oak to touch the roof. 
they right. have a much more compact profile. That's why I think you need to work with someone who knows the appropriate types of mitigation for that. Okay. So, do we? Need I think a I, I think we. My feeling is, prove this conditionally conditioned on the fact that the Mr. Moore. Uh, uh, runs it by Doug and Hillary uh, and get the appropriate okay on the plants for mitigation. Okay. I, that sounds like a motion. That sounds reasonable and, and whatever can be mitigated by trees instead of shrubs would be preferable. Right. Okay, do I hear, John, is that a motion? That That's a motion. Any? All right, and do I hear a second? Second, okay. Michael. But I had okay. one other. I had one other uh, issue point. Okay, Leon. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. When I was out there, Mr. Moore was saying that he planned to put the fallen wood at the base of the slope, um, uh, so that that would in some way be affecting the the, uh, the wetland. It would be within the fifty. Uh, okay. So within the order, stack it or? I think he was talking. Well, he can speak for himself. Well, I, yes, I would try to stack it along the, the edges of the uh, present uh, incline. Um, if it's a problem to do that, I'll just have the trees removed entirely. I just figured that having the trees on site might be better. Left that there. was preferred. That that was would be preferred. What's the feeling of the commissioners? I'm not that worried about it. That if putting down there, as long as it's not out into the wetlands, as, right, as long as it's at the bottom, no, no, no. The, the base of the of the bank, it'll also yes. add habitat for small animals and bugs and. Um, yes, exactly. And, and, and as it decomposes, thing, it uh, provides nutrients to the ground. Too. Exactly. That's why. Uh, uh, and another thing, the plant list that I provided, it was more uh, just to plant the embankment. It wasn't a list of items to actually replace the trees. Right. Our right. Intent. Uh, I would will be more than happy to plant trees to replace the trees. Um, and yeah, you can tell us whatever type of tree you want us to plant. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, I need a motion that pulls those two things together as far as the plan. Well, I think it, these would the be in the it would be in the order of conditions that the uh, that the planting be approved by Doug and Hillary, and that the purpose would be to replace the carbon sequestering of the trees that are taken down, and the wood that's put at the bottom of the uh, bank be maximized in order to be a natural addition to the to the nutrients of the soil. Uh, that's a little vague. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we can trust Hillary and Doug to handle this. Yep, I think we can. How, how oh. does Hillary feel about that? I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's there. All right. uh, okay. So I think we have a motion and a second. We can just go ahead and let Hillary uh, work out the details. Yeah, give okay. Hillary some more work. His right. People will call her people and she's busy telling people they can't put RVs in their front yards. Stop <laughs> asking questions and I won't give you answers. Okay. <laughs> After that this extended conversation. Two or three. Yeah. Uh, is it two or a three? Is it in the buffer zone? That's what I'm looking at his drawing. It's in the riverfront area, so it's a two. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna vote. John Cumbler? Aye. Barbara Bresnow? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Yes. And Leon Shreves, yes. Form so. two. Form two. Form two. Okay, doke. So, Mr. Moore, you're all set. If you just need to work with uh, Hillary on your on the planting. Uh, okay, so can we just go down to the office 
to discuss it with Hillary or how should we do that? You're not going to find me there. Um, you'll have better luck actually talking about it with Doug, who will be in the office more. I'm scheduled to have um, some knee surgery next week. So I think you're going to want to reach out to my oh, good luck. Good Doug. Luck. Good uh, luck. So yeah. we can go down and just speak to Doug directly? Um, I would call the office first and make an appointment and he'll come to you. Okay. Great. All right, and can we proceed then to hire the arborist, or yes. do we have to wait to do the? the no, break? you can go ahead. You can go okay. ahead. And how would the arbor the arborist ask if we got permission? How do we go? Does he find out we have permission? We're gonna mail you um, an approval document, um, and you'll have that on site. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Thank you. Okay. Happy St. Patty's Day. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that green beer. <laughs> okay, next on our uh, agenda is Courier, 1045 Ch Chequesset Neck Road, map 19, parcel 92. Is there anybody here to represent that? Yes, I'm Mark Robinson from New Day Energy, and uh, I'm the one that made the application. Okay, this is the uh, solar cells. Right? Yes, we had uh, staked the property, um, challenging though that was, considering he's got his collection of debris and boats in that area. But yeah. uh, All right. I for so one am glad to see that that stuff's going to go away. <laughs> did, did the uh, commissioners go to this this morning? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just we went out there earlier when it was going to be by the, by the uh, cliff, right? It's, it's a different site. It's right, it's up property. by the road, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, well, it's a different property. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, um, I have a question. Um, it, it doesn't look like any trees have to come down for the array itself, but do any trees have to come down so that he gets solar there? No. No. No, because it's going to be facing uh, southwest. So it's actually... You know, can't do this on the kit. My Italian doesn't work here. You know? uh, it gets enough sun so that when it's facing southwest, it has an open area uh, that's almost 90 feet before it gets to the next tree. So we're fine. Okay. And I, I just couldn't tell from the map um, what area it's in. Is it in the 50 foot? Is it in the riverfront? Is what it, it is? Um, uh, about 12 feet of it are outside of the 100 foot mark and uh, the other 25 feet of it or so are within the 100 going towards the 50. Um, okay. All of it is clear of the 50 by far because okay. that's actually the whole house. All right. I, um, I, we went, Barbara and I went out there and this looks like a, a very nice place to put a solar unit, it's already disturbed. In fact, it'll clean it up a little, although I didn't mind the fact he had boats and trash around, um, gave <laughs> property character. But I definitely <laughs> thought that this is something- and When you're talking about Charlie, character is the right word. We should, we should approve this because it gets solar, which is a good thing. Yep. I'm in favor of this. All right, so that sounds like a motion. Is there a second? I will second, Barbara. Okay, voice vote. Uh, John Cumbler? Yes. Barbara Bresnow? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Recuse because the trust is no butter. <laughs> okay. And Leon Shreves, aye. So, the courier is all set then, Mr. Robinson. And is Thank that you very much. Is that a, uh, that's in the buffer zone or part of it is. So it's a, min a negative, what, two or three? Three. Three, negative three, okay. And RDA form two again. And will I be receiving something by mail saying that we're okay to file the building application? Yes, you will. Uh, can I give you a different address so that it doesn't get uh, forwarded and forwarded? Because I'm currently down in Florida. 
Can you email that address into Christine Bates? Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Will do. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, sir. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Same to you. Okay, what's next on our agenda? 75 okay. Omaha Road. Yep. Mr. Yadowitz. Udowitz. 75 or yeah. Udowitz. Udowitz. Um, 75 Omaha Road, map 28, parcel 189. Construct a stone revetment to replace the seawall. Is there anybody to represent this project? We have Bob uh, yeah. Perry. Hi, Hillary. Thank you. Uh, Hi, um, good evening to all of you. I am Bob Perry. Cape Cod Engineering is the company. I have been uh, working with the Utowitz family for probably six months now, evaluating their situation. And uh, we completed a survey of the important parts of this lot. And um, if you've been there, you know that it is one of those um, sort of corrugated concrete walls that has um, sort of run its course as far as its lifespan goes. It's, uh, it's cracked and corroded. It's leaning over. And it looks to me uh, in, in scoping out the, the overall coast that a number of those walls have already been replaced uh, to the south here. I know there's a, a bunch of them still to the north. And this may be the last one along this reach. It is um, the termination uh, on the north end. Uh, so what's before you are two um, separate uh, projects but since a notice of intent was going in, um, the, the uh, Yudowitz family was concerned about um, some of the traffic issues. Uh, if they use their driveway, there's pretty good head of steam. Some of the trucks need to get to get off that beach. And so they have um, asked me to investigate an alternate driveway. So that's the second piece of this all occurring on the same parcel. But I'm going to address the revetment first. Um, it, it's fairly typical as far as stone revetments go. It um, will replace the concrete wall in full. It is not to be stationed seaward of the landwardmost portion of the wall. That wall, if you know those things, they've got a pretty good footing on them. And the toe stones would be installed at the back edge of the landward edge of the footing. Um, it's just been my experience overall that when these things are proposed, the uh, encouragement is to minimize encroachment into the coastal beach. So mm -hmm. that's what's being done here. And there's enough coastal bank to do that. Um, the, uh, there will be, a, uh, I think you'll see a measure of beach nourishment that will just be incidental to the project. Um, and what this is, is a, a revetment that's uniform as it comes off of the existing revetment, but ever so slightly landward. And as it reaches its northern termination, it will drop in elevation. And there's a little detail on the plan that shows how the, the very end of this will drop in elevation and it will be a, a bit of a self-supporting angled stone array so that if, if uh, the beach continues to erode and we have um, you know, an, an encroaching tidal impact that whatever scour that might occur there would not destabilize the stones for some time. So that's just a little detail, but I wanted to point it out to you. Um, there will be disturbance above the revetment that's gonna be limited in scope, but that area when the thing is completed would be he heavily, heavily planted with beach grass there's quite a bit of vegetation on the bank and I would expect that that would begin to encroach uh, down into the beach grass wherever that was planted. Um, and of course, shrubs can be added to that. I just don't see the need for it right now, but beach grass would be the initial treatment. Um, access course is right through Omaha Road. Uh, th there would have to be some controls uh, for what would be a, 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 a conflict with some of the uh, aquaculture traffic and uh, the contractors that I've spoken to are not expecting any trouble with that. They're certainly gonna be mindful of, of the need to um, not block any access. 
And so um, the demolition occurs first, but probably not in full. I think that uh, portions of this revetment would be put in in replacement for the wall in segments that could be 50 or 60 feet. Um, so that's the summary of that. The, the driveway, if we go into that, um, there is an interest to preserve the tree cover on that lot in that zone. And uh, there, are, there are options uh, for minor alterations of what you see as a layout. Uh, and the original or the existing driveway would be restored as, a, as an opening through the brush. Uh, it's probable that the branches will grow back. You know, it's hard to prune it every year and keep them back, but there's a proposal to augment that regrowth with, uh, it looks as though bayberry and beach plum does very well. It's a very sheltered strip of land inside that driveway and planted native shrubs will do quite well, but they'd like to keep a little pathway and maintain that because it's certainly the right way to walk to the beach as opposed to cutting any kind of a path or a line down to uh, the coastal bank. And so with that recovered, um, there'd be a little bit of, of, of a parking spur at the top along with the parking spurs they have. The new driveway has a turnout. If you've ever driven up there, you know how tight it is. And in, in planning this, um, th there, is a, there is an interest in saving some of, of, the, of the more established uh, pines and oaks. So without telling you that this is gonna change dramatically, I could see minor adjustments in this layout that you currently are looking at, but that's what they're trying to do is to create a little bit of an S turn, goes down the hill and then that gives everybody a much safer situation. The last thing I'll say is that with respect to a driveway like that, um, there ha happens to be a small depression at the bottom of the driveway. It's really very convenient that it's not, it's not uh, the case that any runoff will come out into Omaha Road. It's gonna shed itself right there at the lot line where there's a depression. We understand by looking at the NHESP maps that we're just out of the habitat, but as I, you know, discussed with um, uh, Ann Udowitz, uh, there's, there's still and will be a concern for any habitat, regardless of whether or not it's mapped. So this, there's no interest in doing this work when we're in season for terrapins and other wildlife uh, that would be of concern to NHESP. Um, we did file with DMF because the, some of the activity to do this work is seaward of the high tide line, and they're you know they're they've they've written a uh, a summary which is what we're used to seeing. Some of their recommendations aren't practical. Most of them are, and and we would adhere to that. You can't do this job from the upland. Um, you have to do it from the beach. Uh, so, without any further ado, I, I know you might have some questions, and I'd be happy to try to provide answers to those. Uh, thanks very much. I have a question about the, uh, the existing wall. Is that going to be removed as you go along? Or yes. Is it, okay. So the diagram at the, at the bottom where it says profile A-A, -A, right in the middle, it shows the existing wall, but that'll be removed. Is that correct? Yes, those profiles have a label that says the concrete wall corrugated to be removed. So okay. I, I just wanted to show the relationship of the wall to the revamp. I see, I see, that, that's well done. I, I have a related question about the footings. It looks like there's a big cement pad that serves as a footing for that corrugated wall. Is that gonna go or? Yes, every, every bit of it. Okay. Every bit of it. I didn't see, uh, any indication of the 50 foot or the 100 foot buffer zone on this plan, which we, 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 we did. We did want to give that to you with respect to the driveway work because we knew that was happening in a buffer zone. And so if you look over there by the driveway, what, what we've uh, delineated is um, there's a dune ridge on the opposite side of the road. 
And there's also a salt marsh boundary, which it, it could technically be above the spring tide, but it's a marsh. There's often a fringe marsh next to the salt marsh. And so we give you the 100 foot buffer from that. But I, I didn't feel that a 100 foot buffer from the top of the coastal bank would have any any purpose and, and I didn't put it on. We can, but I didn't put it on. But do you see the one for the driveway? Yes, yes, yes. I do. So a lot of the driveway is in the 100 foot buffer zone, but yeah, a, lot, a lot of the old driveway was also in the 100 foot buffer zone. Right. About, about equal, about the right. same. Okay. Um, what, what material were you gonna use for the um, driveway? Well, the, the, I've also reviewed with the owner of least my preference and I think they're in agreement with native native uh, uh, gravel so you'd have a processed native gravel base and probably a three-quarter inch uh, crushed native stone for a, a stone surface it's got a 10 percent even a 12 percent slope so um, while you know it's it's not perfect uh, the other one's steep as well but an appropriate compacted gravel stone base um, will work. And I can state that with certainty because I have a 12% uh, native stone driveway myself at 12%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I, know, I know that it will require a little bit of maintenance from time to time, but that's what they, that's what they have now. Uh, Barbara, go ahead. I'll get you in a minute, John. Okay. I have two other questions, comments. One is that's a very rutted sandy road and the homeowners often pay for regrading of that road. If they're gonna be trucks bringing big rocks down there, I imagine that there's gonna be some damage to the road more than usually caused by the shellfish trucks. Is there any plan to monitor the yes. road itself? I have some good news for you. If you've ever been in a 10 wheeler with you know 20 tons of stone on it, you don't want potholes <laughs> and what what will happen uh the contractor will be directed to um do two things one the road will be uniform for the term of the job and they will provide the material to do that and it will not be anything but natural clean material whatever's being used on that road now and when the job is complete that route will be left uh in a smooth condition, just as it was being used during the job. And, and I've, you know, I've, we can mandate that. You can either put it in the order, it'll be in the contract. It's just not acceptable that the road will be left in any kind of a debilitated way. I've, I've listened to the trucks come and go and uh, they got it pretty tough with the potholes. There, there'll be, a, it'd be pretty straightforward to, to uh, fix that for the term of this job and leave it better than they found it. Okay, uh, and my, John, my second, I'm sorry. all right, you can get John and then come oh, back. Barbara, you finish your second question. All right, my Thank second you. is that they wanna use the existing driveway as a path to the beach, and then they're gonna have another driveway. And I, I, did they ever consider about just replanting the original driveway and then just walking down the new driveway to the beach? It's not that far. Yes, and, we, we did. But I, the, the new, the old driveway is being planted, um, and it's just a path uh, that they. I, th I thought it was my idea that I, uh, I was reviewing how this could be done, and I just felt that there's a gas tank down there, and that's not going to be changing. It's a liquid propane, so that's not a threat to the environment. It would evaporate if anything happened. But there's already a need to walk down there to that. And I felt that a small pathway wouldn't injure anything very much. And that's why it's proposed. Okay, I'm not, I'm not real happy with that because they're already cutting into the uh, buffer zone for a new driveway. And now they're gonna have more uh, disturbance. So anyway, that's, that's my comment. And we'll, we can get back to that later maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, John. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I like the fact that the, I think the new driveway makes a better sense for that mm -hmm. space than the old driveway. So I like the fact that they're replacing the old driveway with driveway. 
I want to make sure that the trees that are removed from the old driveway are replaced with trees and not just shrubbery. Um, and I have to say, the, 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 it, the sooner they replace that, the present concrete structure, the better. Uh, it's, it's the, the foot is sinking into the sand in the, the southern part of it, and that wall is leaning. And it looks, um, it looks like a hazard at this point. And I think the sooner it gets taken care of, the better, so. We, we agree, uh, we agree. Uh, I had wondered if, um, if with an order of conditions in place, if, um, if there would be any objection to stationing a couple of boulders uh, near it. So if it, if it fell over, it wouldn't fall over too far, at least until it can be replaced. Of course, mm -hmm. that's up to you. Um, there is quite a distance there. I, I, I just want to come back, if I might, to the to the the, the driveway. There would be 150 feet along that road if we were to access the water from the um, new driveway spur. Um, and you know, there's a lot more traffic there than there's ever been. Um, there's potholes and splashes, and I understand that Mrs. Hudowitz is is elderly and, and would probably have a, a bit more trouble making her way along there. And I, there's no objection to planting some trees in this uh, driveway that's being abandoned. But the reason we're telling you about the pathway is so that it's, it's up front. It's not just somebody walking around the property where it's a virgin forest or bearberry grove or whatever, but we're just trying to be um, straightforward about this. And since it was a driveway, and since it will revert to wood and shrubland, having that small pathway is, is a convenience and I don't see a huge environmental negative to it. But I, I just wanted to get that out because there's a, there's a need uh, that, that I think is, is established in the Utowitz family to try to avoid a, an extra you know, 300 feet every time they're trying to go to the beach. So that's, that's my speech on that, thanks. Leon, Leon, can I? I, I, I agree with Barbara, I think she's absolutely right. I also think that the reality is if we don't allow them to have a path, there will be a path anyway. Uh, and I, that, that will just happen. And I would rather we had a little more say in it than just um, end up seeing a pathway that has no controls whatsoever. So I think Barbara is right, but I do think reality is such that that they're gonna they're gonna walk down that that to the beach the other the old driveway way anyway. We we I get your point. I, I think it's good, uh, and and you would have a, a record that there's a path and that it needs to be maintained as a small item. Um, but I, I know I, I say every once in a while, I have to say they haven't regulated walking yet, but we're just trying to be honest with you and to show you what, the, uh, what they're planning to do and that they want to do it responsibly. Um, I understand, let me just comment about the path, but a lot of times these paths start out as paths, but then before you know it, they have little um, retaining steps and other things associated and become more like a, a, a real walkway or something along those lines. So maybe it, it's appropriate to have the condition that it remain just a path and not some other kind of um, stairway structure or um, have any, um, I forget what they, you know. But any material put down. Any material put down to maintain it at all. I think that's, that's a good idea. Acceptable. Like that as a compromise. That, that's acceptable. <clears throat> and as long as there's a time of year restrictions for terrapins, that's fine. I don't know if the shellfish constable wants to weigh in on this one because that's an important access point for a lot of the growers in Wellfleet. I'll, this is Nancy. I'm the shellfish constable. I would weigh in after other people that have had their hands up have spoken. I'm, I would just put my hand up this second. I think we lost Leon. We can't lose our chair. No. 
Here he is. <laughs> I have a couple questions too when, when it's my turn. I can't raise my hand appropriately. <laughs> Sorry. Are we using the raise hand uh, function or chat or, or just? Well, I think Deborah's had her hand up for a while and I can, I can hold off on my commentary until she okay. goes, so long as Leon's back and he can call on her. Okay, sorry, I had a computer failure. Uh, Deborah Spitz, you wanted to say something? Uh, you're muted. I apologize. No problem. So, um, so I own the house immediately behind the Udowitz house. Uh, looking toward the bay, we see their house and we see cars coming and going. And I haven't seen the plan for what's going to happen to the driveway, but I was curious about what the new driveway is gonna do in terms of as you look out across the water, um, because we see cars already, um, we've planted some trees that have grown over time to obscure that driveway, but um, could somebody help me understand what this is going to do? Or is there something I could see that would at least let me get a sense of what it's going to be? Well, uh, it's Bob Perry here. I'm the engineer. I can certainly, um, I, I'm not good at Zoom to upload the plan, but um, I can certainly provide the plan to you. Um, I, I think you may have had discussions, maybe not with the, with the Udowitzes, but there's um, No, I haven't had any discussions. Oh, with them. Oh, okay, then, then, then we're starting from scratch. And, and I wanted to just tell you that it's been my concern that trees be spared mm -hmm. wherever possible. There's a white oak in there that's very sprawling white oak. And, and I've noted that, you know, it's rare in the woods that we locate all the trees, but we saw that tree and we said, well, you know, that tree should uh, should remain, and so we're we're gonna we're working around that. And as far as the view goes, um, the driveway will be um, forty five feet from the lot line with you. You're the second to the last on the left as you're driving out. Is that your place? We're, we don't open onto Omaha Road. I'm on okay. Billingsgate Road, so oh, wow. I'm. Okay. Uh, you have to get to my house a completely different way. Uh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll check that geographically and I'd be happy to, um, you know, do whatever I could do. My vote here would be that, um, I, I'm just gonna ask, are you up higher? Are you on the high ground here? Yes. Okay, um, can you see the Uterwitz driveway today? Yes, part of okay. it. Okay, this driveway will be running where, where that driveway that you are looking at today is, is running in a line a, a, away from you. Right. This, this driveway will be running perpendicular to that. And it may be that you don't see it because the trees will screen it because it's not running away from you, it's running perpendicular. Well, we but, see, what we see is the top part where people park cars and we see I those see. lights. Okay. And if yep. it's running perpendicular to what's going on, then it's gonna cross essentially cross the, the, the area that we look out on to get to Omaha Road, right not I'm, I'm quite looking, far out Omaha. I'm looking at your house now, I went to Google Earth. Well, there's no change proposed up, proposed up at the top. It's just where that's gonna snake its way through the woods. And I, my sense would be that there's a lot of trees between you and this driveway. But again, I would have to go there and assess that but I didn't see another practical route for them to take. But um, what you'll find, and, and I think most will agree, if you clear a path in the woods, you will encourage light. And wh when you get more light, you can get advanced and better growth to some of the trees that do remain. But I'm, I'm unable to tell you what the visible impact of this would be for you. Mm -hmm. I think it will be slight. But I, but I would reserve uh, an, a better answer once I've looked at it, if, if indeed we, we want to do that. Well, thank you for letting me know what you've thought about. And I'll send you the plan if you like. I would appreciate that. We'll have to figure out how to get in touch after this. Well, I, can, I have your a butter address. I can send okay. it to that. I just mail it out tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. 
Is that all, Miss Miss Hitz? Yeah, that's what I, I just wanted to know what was happening. Thank you very much. Okay, Nancy Savetta, our sea, our sea uh, life shellfish commissioner. Would you like to say something? I'm saying, okay, good. Um, so I have a couple questions. I, I wonder if I could just ask them. And then I have a couple of comments, if that's okay. I didn't write a formal letter, but I thought I could do that during the hearing. Um, the, um, as I read this, so high tide comes up to that revetment every day. So it, it, the area in front is intertidal and you will be staging because as you said, um, I couldn't see how you could do it from the upland either. So you'll have to stage and do the work from the beach. Um, so what I would like to request is that we do a, like an access and staging site visit together with your uh, company uh, before any work begins. So that mm -hmm. was one thing. Um, are, um, is there gonna be beach nourishment? And if so, how much each year? That was a question. I, uh, I have not, uh, not focused on a volume. I do anticipate that if, if it is desirable, and it's not always desirable, but these, these revetments and seawalls have been here for quite some time. And my, I would speculate that, that beach nourishment that would be of the same material that would come from this landform would be beneficial to this area. But you may be a better judge of that than me. And there will be sediment displaced from this job and it would typically be placed on the revetment so that it can wash off slowly. It be, it's stockpiled and then it goes on the revetment when the job is advancing. And my opinion is that's the best way to beach nourishment or to do beach nourishment so that the material doesn't wind up as one big slug into the, into the intertidal zone. It will be meted out over successive tide phases and, um, but that's, that's incidental to the work. And there, there is not yet, uh, and I think if there was going to be, uh, I would be interested in any other nourishment programs that have been mandated along that shorefront <laughs> because we don't have an erosion rate since the wall was put in to generate a volume from. But it, I know that from my experiences in some other parts of the west facing shoreline of Cape Cod Bay and East Ham, you have approximately a one foot per year average rate loss, some of those sand banks. And that translates to about a hundred cubic yards for a hundred you know, linear feet if you have a 20 foot tall bank. But I, I would reserve an answer on the volume, um, but, but I would expect there would be beach nourishment. Okay, um, so one of the things that I'm starting to ask is that beach nourishment be done, uh, not when we're having um, big negative and big positive tides. So when we have the smaller tides so that it doesn't go all in one full swoop, that is a, a very um, prolific aquaculture area and we've had problems with sand covering up beds. So if we could do right. it um, when there's not big like moon tides, um, that would be preferable. Um, when in the part where you're talking about the selected alternative um, and you talk about overtopping storm events and minor erosion that can be repaired, I just wondered would that have any consequences to Omaha Road? Um, I'm thinking about you know just that access point there. Yes, uh, I, I, I believe in my own career that for new seawalls, I tend to go with, you know, there's always this, this discussion of best available measures and, you know, rock revetments don't have to go all the way to the, you know, to the sky to work. Um, and yet, if you misjudge that, you, you can have a constant repair. These are locations where, because of the conditions that exist, and, and you know, we didn't create those, this is a 45 years of coastal armament and it's been determined generally that revetments are going to be better than a vertical wall and with a little bit of nourishment you've got a situation that is um, reasonably 
uh, appropriate, maybe not fully sustainable, but but the um, idea of um, returning to a project because you have overtopping erosion and or collapsing stones is not really advised, especially here. This is a situation where modest nourishment at the right time of, of the season and the month, as you've suggested, um, with a properly built revetment is probably the way to, to do this. That, that's likely considered best available measures today. Um, you said, you did say that the, um, with the driveway, the runoff is not gonna go down to Omaha Road, right? And therefore- it, my, my belief is the way we've crafted this and, and looking at the terrain, there would not be any uh, way for it to do that because of the depression that exists right there at the boundary of the lot. Okay. Um, let's see, I think I just had one. Um, do you have any idea like how long the project will take in terms of uh, from start to finish? The uh, revetment is not a small job. As you know, it's 285 feet. And I uh, understand from my own experience, as you would know from yourself being there, it's gonna be managed by the tides. Can't do anything at high tide. So depending upon who gets the job when it goes to bid, uh, there are differences in the way these jobs are prosecuted. And I would say that this would at least be a six week job. Okay. Um, just, I'll have to be communicating with the shell fishermen that access there. Oh yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. You know, and and my feeling is that if we can have this initial site visit, um, you know, just in case there is, you know, I, I would want to see where you're going to stage and work to see if there's any chance that shell fishing resources could be compromised. My feeling is that it's high enough up on the beach that it wouldn't, um, but I. <sighs> One, I don't know how you execute your work or how your engineer will. So, um, you know, sometimes if it looks like it's going to be compromising shellfishing resource, shellfish resources, then we ask for some mitigation um, money mm -hmm. to make sure. up that. Understood. But, um, yeah. um, sure. the, the one thing that we all will need to be mindful of is that, uh, as you already know, it's busy. So we should be in communication. Um, very good communication and just everybody understands that it's going to be a multiple use um, access for that six week time period because everybody's going to be going out and working at the exact same time at low tide. So right, I, think I understand it. Yes, you're absolutely right. It, and I've spoken to the owner applicant about this, that the crunch time um, when you're you know, being chased off by the high tide is when folks are going to want to be uh, uh, in close. And I know um, the the the, the says do do uh, uh, with, without causing a stir. I think I think there's there's probably some ownership uh, of the intertidal zone, but it's it's fairly narrow. And and I know everyone's trying to cooperate, but we have no intention of of blocking uh, anyone's uh, need to get uh, off that beach when they need to get off that beach. And you know you've seen revetments. They there's a lot of windrow action of stones and. That's going to have to be uh, done carefully, no question. Yeah, but not, and I know them to be extremely um, thoughtful about this process. I spoke with them about it last summer. So I know they're putting a lot of time and thought into it. Yeah, I just need the cooperation of the construction folks. I'm the engineer. And so I often I, I would have, a, have made a selection by now, but um, that's not, we're not there yet. Okay, so um, I guess my, my main takeaways from this would be um, very um, good communication between us and then um, a site visit with the crew in addition to you to talk about staging and uh, work areas so that we can determine if there's going to be any impact to shellfish. Um, I agree. I absolutely agree with you. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Is, is this house a pre-1978 house? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I actually had that information and you had to ask, but I, I, I believe, um, I don't know if I got it in the notice, but I believe it, it is by several years. I may 
I may tell you that before I get off the phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the wall, these walls were just starting to go in in 1977, 78. This might have been one of the early ones. Certainly looks like it's old enough. Um, well, it's, it's the house that counts, I think. No, I, I know it. I don't think the wall would have been built if there hadn't been a house, but that's that's what I'm getting at. Um, and I'll, I'll see about that. Um, I'm looking around here. Yeah. Right, Barbara, did you yeah, have something to say? Yeah, it relates to shellfish access. And we were out there today, we saw the, the trucks coming and going and we saw the tracks and they're really close to the wall. So I'm thinking if they're gonna be working on this, the shell fishermen, the growers are gonna to have to be driving uh, more out into the intertidal. And is that gonna be an appropriate thing for them to be doing? They won't be able to, to drive the way they are now, but they may have to move further. Well, yeah. The water. <laughs> there's going to have to be an accommodation in the traffic. Um, I think with the amount of revetment that I've seen out there, I, I don't know the dates of that construction with respect to the establishment of the grants. Perhaps there have been others. Um, your, your growers are, are probably uh, the best uh, experts at uh, knowing when they need to go. And they, Perry, may not want to, they may not want to cut this uh, too close. And, and frankly, they shouldn't be driving too close to that wall anyway. So I think that one of the topics that's going to be important for everybody has just been discussed. And that is a, a meeting with your shellfish constable to, to flush out the traffic. Um, it, it might affect the price. It might affect the logistics. Um, you, you, you know, the contractor's convenience to put a bunch of rocks on the beach, that, that's a convenience. So that might have to be tempered. That's all, Nancy, uh, it, it can be worked out. Nancy, would you like to say something? Yeah, the, the, uh, the other thing is that, so because of the project, if the fishermen have to move further down the beach and then they're impacting the resource, these are all things that we're gonna wanna talk about. Exactly. Uh, yeah, the, the nearest grant looks like it's about 450 feet away. But I, you know, I would defer no, wild shellfishing resources. I'm talking about wild shellfishing. Oh, okay. So um, you would know this better than I. On the beach. I'm not anticipating any, but I'm just trying to be, you know, let's just yeah. say that we're going to look at it so that we can be sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we've we've had to have. Uh, is there any concern about the? Uh, to this is to the commissioners. Is there any concern about this? Uh, revetment going in here. This is a lower uh, stress area as far as wind and it's not on a long reach. So do we feel the need for the same kind of uh, peer review for this? What do you think, Hillary? I would say no. Um, I know the area quite well. Um, there's a wall there now. What we're putting in is better than what's there. So I don't believe we need to have this one peer reviewed. It's not proposed to go out in front of it. They're moving back. They're staying um, within the confines of the wall and the bank. So I don't feel this needs to be peer reviewed. I did want to get a solid beach nourishment plan in from Bob. Um, and I'm wondering about the end, and I see your detail on the cap return, but can you um, talk about that again? Because I think we're certainly gonna see some erosion down there. And I just wanna understand from your perspective, how you think that's gonna work. I will be glad to tell you what my thoughts are on it. <clears throat> right now we have a vertical wall that makes an abrupt angular, almost a 90 degree turn. And it's just smooth, sharp, really, directs the wind, it would tear off the, the biggest eddies if you had a flood. And what it's being replaced with is a, um, a sloped, uh, textured formation of native stone so that floodwaters will actually go over it down there. Um, the plan calls for uh, dropping of the cap at that corner, um, which will no longer be a corner, we're gonna drop the cap um, steadily over a distance of about 12 feet 
you see, way down there, um, the, the, the bank diminishes in elevation and, and everything changes. Yeah. And so we're gonna dr drop the cross section of this. And so it will uh, just not have an abrupt effect on surcharged storm tides, such as what the wall has. There won't be any more reflection directly back out. There won't be any terrible eddies <clears throat> ripping off the sharp corner. Um, you can get a little more tumbling action, but that's turbulent and, and, and it's mixed up and it's probably not going to sweep sand away. But the other point of that detail is that it's, it's a self-supporting um, end so that it's low in elevation. It's got stone texture, not smooth, and it won't fall down if there is a little bit of scour so that within some short period of time, uh, you could pile a little bit of sand back on top of it and it would remain stable and there is no easier place to add sand than right there so it's really in my opinion the right thing to do much less impactive than the structure that's there and it can be buried periodically okay. does anyone else have barbara yeah i just have a very minor thing uh i i People use the term native stone, but stone is not native to Cape Cod. Not here. So, so native it, to New Hampshire. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> not, it's not really native. You yeah. got me there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, but I want to tell you something else. Um, there's stone that shows up around here that's out of Freetown, and it's down by New Bedford, and it comes out of some quarry, and it's blue. And when I refer to native, and I know you know this, but you're 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 good. You're good to say it's New Hampshire, and Maine granite. But um, it's in the sand. The the cobbles and the chunks of granite that we find around here naturally we call native, but they do match the sand because the quartz content and other minerals are close. And I I forbid the use of bluestone on this revetment, and that's what the word native is intended to convey here. John. Yeah, I, I don't know how to say this. I, I, I feel that this is a project that I can support, but my condition is that, uh, that the house that we have evidence, and I think the house is pre-78, but we have some evidence that the house is pre-78, because if the house is not pre-78, then I can't vote to approve this. So well, we can't. I, I, I just pulled I up the assessor's, I just pulled up the assessor's card. Now that's not always good proof, but it's 1973. And another um, another um, proof would be uh, possibly in the deed, you'll find land and buildings might not have, uh, you know, probably was a vacant lot in the 60s, but I've got a 1973 house construction date. Um, but I can I can get you more evidence. Yeah. Hello? John, Hello? did you have something? Oh, how do I raise my hand? I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. This is uh, Ms. Rucker. Hi, Hi Hillary. Uh, Luther Kroll built the house in 1974. You it was did. finished by 74. You Construction did. started, I think, in 71. And then the wall came later, and the wall was finished, I think, by 81. Okay. okay. So it's the house that counts, right? Yep, it's the yeah. house. The house okay. was finished in 74 by Luther Kroll. Okay, great. John, so, did you have something you wanted to say? Or did oh, you that was say? my that was it. Okay. It it seems to me, oh, I'm sorry. Hillary, would you like to yes. say something? Yes, I wanted to say something. I just wanted um Bob to uh agree to submit to us his beach nourishment plan so we could evaluate that. The other thing I don't see on the plan is the area of disturbance within the 50 and 100. And I didn't hear Barbara ask for that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's on my list. It's okay. on my list. It's okay. on my list. Yes. Okay. I just, I didn't hear it. So I wanted to make sure I heard and it. it. And it would also include the new driveway, the newly disturbed yes. area as well. Okay. And then I'm thinking about Nancy Chavetta's comments. And I don't know how far out um, seaward the shell fisherman can drive, but does it get soft 
in a place farther out um, where they can't go. And perhaps we need to have the driving path, maybe one driving path for the construction crew and another driving path if possible for the shell fishermen, because I see this being um, sort of messy and a little bit dangerous during construction. So I would ask that of Nancy to identify for us where it's soft and where there's shellfish resources in that intertidal zone where we absolutely don't want anyone driving. Yeah, I can do that. And um, I think that would be great if we could be like, you know, this is the lane that the shellfish yeah. are going to This is the lane for the construction and it'll yeah. just make it go more smoothly. You have little orange cones. Well, there's got to be some way to mark it. I don't know how, maybe with a metal pipe or something, but we'll see. We can. Yeah. And okay, also, we but... have a meeting or something, I can communicate it with people. Okay, it strikes me that here's, here's what the concerns that I have. We have an abutter's concern about the view and we have a plan that may be modified because of that. So I, I want, that needs to happen. Um, we're, we'll need a planting plan for the old driveway, uh, replenishment plan. And uh, if it is replenished, it gets done during neap tides and not moon tides. Uh, we don't, we'll, the duration is something that we'll need to know, uh, but you, we, you won't need to know that for ours, but uh, Nancy would be, Ms. Javetta would be very interested in that, I'm sure. Uh, so we'll need a final plan that's gonna be as built and uh, you need to do a site visit with the shellfish constable, Ms. Javetta. Barbara? I would just like the time of year restriction on it as well as a condition. Okay. Um, March 15th or April 15th? For, for what? To the end? Trigger. Yeah. Oh. Um, as far I'm as sorry, what are we time, of year, time of year, when, when they, they can't work or when they should work, they should be done by, um, by May 1st because terrapins will be. Hmm. We'd uh, like to be, we, we would not like to be out there even in April, uh, the, okay. the, um, uh, not, not this year, forget this year, please. Yeah. But, but to wrap this heavy work up and to get the beach grass planted, you, you really want to follow in, in, in March or early April with the planting. So that, that's really what we'd be pushing for, uh, where the work go, goes on in the, in the deepest winter months, um, so, well, certainly late November, through uh, the end of March. Mm -hmm. Okay, that should be a condition as well. Agree. So shall we, since we don't have a final plan and we don't have the required uh, our, our planting plan or a replenishment plan, should we continue this to get that information? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, th I think we're pretty close. I mean, we, we've identified uh -huh. most of the important questions. Um, I think I, I would move to, um, if it's okay with Mr. Perry to continue this. That's well, certainly okay. Uh, we we wanna you know, get you what you need. And um, mm -hmm. I need a little time to assemble that. Um, I do wanna contact the abutter and uh, get that information to them. So a month. Okay. So you want to come back the second meeting in April, which what, what's that? What's that date? <clears throat> I'm not going to, I've got to go off Cape for April, April 21. Ooh, I I'll be, uh, I won't be here. Um, okay. um, uh, how about, how about May the one 5th? May 5th? About, yes. Yes. Okay. And, and I don't believe the Utawitzes would object to that because we're, our target is next season. And right. okay, perfect. So. Well, that gives us plenty of time to coordinate and uh, plan for this. That's that's what we'd like, and, and it's better for everybody. All right, Mr. Perry. Do I hear a motion? Um, I think I move to continue. Do I hear a second? Second, John Cumbler. All right, let's have a vote. Uh, John Cumbler? Aye. Barbara Bres Bresnell? Yeah, yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Michael Fisher? Recuse because we're a, the trust is a, is a butter. 
<laughs> okay. And Leon Shreves, aye. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Perry, for the uh, for the description and your responses to our concerns. Oh, no, so thank you. More from you. Yes, indeed. I'll catch you in a, a little more than a month. And uh, thanks again. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. That was to the 5th of May, is that right? Okay. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, Shadorovsky. Is there somebody to represent that? Yes. Hmm. Um, this was a coastal project and I'm just gonna make sure. This was the vinyl seawall. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we got a revised plan. Um, Charlie was on the meeting earlier. Uh, I'm just gonna check the dates here. They got us their paperwork. Um, let me see if I can bring him on the phone and see. Did we get the revised pack plan in our packet? Yes. You yes. should have. Yes, yes. And it's quite different. Is this the one from Coastal Engineering? Yes. This is this is a new, completely new revetment, right? Yes, no. like filling a gap. That... No, no, this is a replacement or repair. Right. Hi, Fa's calling. Yep. Everybody's phones <laughs> ringing. I know everybody's phones ringing when I fall. I don't know what happened to them. They were supposed to present it tonight. Um, I got Charlie's voicemail. So um, okay. we want to go on to the next one and um, see if he comes back to join us. Okay. Yeah. I'd love, yeah, we need to review what, what we talked about last time, just so some of us can uh, catch up. Okay, the final one is Coates. Map 30, parcel 120, 10 First Street. Oh, this is the re remove and, uh, and prune trees. Is there somebody to represent? Hi, us? this is Charles Wentz with Ponderosa Landscaping. Right. Uh, we you revised the plan. Uh, we took fewer trees out on the north side of the, the view. Uh, reduced it by about seven fewer trees. Um, we want to prune one tree that's near the house uh, and open up that view corridor that we talked about before. And um, then towards the west, um, remove those saplings, prune the pitch pine near the there's two pitch pines near the existing deck and a scrub oak. And we were gonna plant with mitigation um, 148 trees, including, or uh, 148 plants, including three trees. And I think you guys have kind of looked at this before. Uh, did you have any questions, follow up? Mike, did, did you? Did you go out there this morning? 
Yes, I went out and uh, I think they've largely done what we recommended in terms of not cutting down the trees outside of the Eucard or reducing yeah. the number of trees altogether. Um, so I, I was favorably impressed. And we are going to plant three tree, three cedar trees on the, on the land inside the, the near the 50 foot line. Okay. Uh, this Maybe. is Barbara. I think this is an improvement and I think um, our suggestions were taken into account for this revised plan. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any more questions from the commissioners? You have to unmute, John. My question is the, um, we're, you're removing far more trees than you're replacing, um, even with the revised plan. Is there a way to up the number of trees you're replacing so that matches the number of trees you're removing? Do you want to add some more cedars? We could add some more cedars along the property line. I think that would be pretty easy to think if we added three more. Yeah. Yeah. That would be good. That a lot of those trees are just a little sapling. That's, that's always preferable. Yeah. That's always preferable. Yeah, a lot of those are sap, saplings. But some of them are, are, are you know. Yeah. Yes. Are yeah, I think we'd be happy to plant some more trees along that property line. Um, cedars come to mind. If you think they'll take, yeah. Yeah, I think they'll, I mean, they might get a little bit of wind burn, but they should survive. Mm -hmm. um, well, the other, we could plant a couple oaks over there. And I, I, I like having oaks go back to I have some a mix of hardwood and softwood there. This is okay. Good. Well, maybe three oaks. I don't know how other members of the commission feel, but I think uh, replacing trees with trees is always a good idea yep. when, when we can. Yep. I can make that adjustment. I'm willing to go with this then with that adjustment. The condition being to add three oak trees, John? And three cedars. And, and three cedars. cedars. Okay. The cedars are already on the list. They're right? on the plan. They're on the plan. Yeah. So we'll add three oaks. Does anyone else have a question before we? I accept a uh, motion. Doesn't look like it. Do I hear a motion? Yes, I move that we approve the NOI for Coates, Map 30, Parcel 120, 10 First Avenue, remove and prune trees to improve view, mitigate with native, native vegetation. With, with the um, conditions that the tr there would be those trees planted. Yes, yes. an additional, okay. yes. Right. Do I hear Sec a second? Second, Barbara. Okay, I have a vote, voice vote. John Cumbler. Aye. Barbara Bresnan. Yes, yes. Ben Fairbank. Yes. Michael Fisher. Yes. Leon Shreves, yes. So it sounds like you're good to go. We need, Thank a, you. We Thank need you. a supervisor. Yep. Supervisor? I can do it. I'll do it. Okay. And that's um, form five. So far, we've got an eight B, two twos, and a five. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Carol. Thank you for responding to our request. No, you're welcome. Okay, I, so we have one. Can I just resolved. before we go off? Can I just say something? Okay. Because. Barbara and I have both been sort of pushing this recently. I think in the future, um, we should let people know that we are looking for replace trees to be replaced with trees, that that's something we are, doesn't, it's not absolute, but something we are looking for. Where could that be put in, Hillary? Um, How can we well, make that known? It could be put into our new regulations when we get them. And in the meantime, we'll just have to, you know, let folks know. 
Right. Yeah. Um, what do we want to do with Shadorovsky? I think we need to continue it. Do we want to? So on April 7th, we're going to have an RDA, two RDA, three RDAs, three RDAs. We're not having Udowitz. And then we'll have Simone, Michelson, Behringer, and Shadorovsky. Right. We'll continue right. it to our next meeting on 4 7. Okay. Right. We're expecting those three of those to go pretty much as a group, though, right? Two, two, two go together, and then there's Behringer, and oh. then there'll be Shadorovsky. Okay. Now, on the Shadorovsky, it's pretty complicated. Did it we is. decide we didn't want a peer review on that? I thought I thought we we did, but I think we had sent him back to the drawing board um, to come back with a different plan. And because there's some you know back angles and uh, it I don't know I, I'm not an expert in the hydrology, but it looks like there's there's all sorts of complications. I think he has to present his plan to us, and then we can you know, see if it requires further review. Okay. Yes, he, it, there are some alternatives there, but I have questions about some of the alternatives. So um, anyway, we can't discuss this. Not until it's presented to us. So right. that That's would be right. time to further, further inquire and see what we need. Okay, does anybody else have anything before we adjourn? I think we should thank Leon for doing an excellent job in terms of leadership. Yeah. Yes, excellent. yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I was sweating this out. So <laughs> Excuse I mean, me. You know, it, it's, different than, it's different than running a meeting at a business meeting or something, which I'd be very comfortable with, because a wrong word or missing a step could invalidate our decisions. It's, this you is a legal great. thing. You yeah. did great. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And you even overcame a computer crash. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to make a recommendation. We need a motion for Shadorovsky for continuation. That's a good point. Okay. So move, Barbara. Second, Second. John Kumbler. Okay. We'll have a vote. Uh, uh, okay. Barbara? Yes. And Benjamin? Yes. Michael? Yes. John? Yes. And Leon says yes, too. So then I move that we adjourn. Second, Barbara. OK. So Ben, what do you think? <laughs> sure, yes. <laughs> Mike? Yes. John? Yes. Barbara? Certainly. <laughs> Me too. OK, we're all in agreement. We're going to adjourn. Hi, you all. Thank you. Have a nice three weeks until the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Good night. Yeah, it'll feel like I'm a vacation. I'm going to go get some green beer. It'll feel like a vacation, <laughs> right? Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night.